I get depressed sometimes by, by, by thinking about all this. You know, I surround myself with this all the time. And I get worried, and I get depressed, and I get angry, and I don't know what to do about it. And, and wherever I get into this headspace, wherever I get into that thought that, that nothing uh, you know, matters, we're all just fighting at this, at this endless battle that's that going to keep going on, and there's not enough people, I, I stop, and I think about the number zero. The number zero is an incredible number. It's quintessential to human history. The number zero was first discovered. The first time the number zero was actually drawn and put, discovered was in India. It was made by Hindu philosophers, right? And what would normally happen, it, it, and what, what this number did, is it changed the numeric system. Double digits, triple digits, it blew that all up, which was amazing, right? Because up to that point, you could only count up to nine, <laughs> which was going to be a problem for Costco. <laughs> Everybody knows that bulk is 13 and up, so. Right? And of course it was Hindus that invented the number zero, that expanded the numeric system, because we needed a number that could help us count all of our gods. <laughs> Just makes sense. Right. Now, Arab scholars would come to India quite often, and, uh, and they would try to learn from what, what these people had, and, and to try to take it back to, you know, uh, to their people, and, and so these Hindu philosophers were touring them around some areas, uh, you know, and they were like, that's where those fake Satanists killed that covenant of witches. Uh, and, you know, that'll change later, probably. We'll, we're trying to work on that. Uh, here's the temple. Uh, it's $10 to go in there. Uh, and, then, and then they saw zero. They said, holy shit, what is that? So the Hindu philosopher sat down with the Arab scholars, and they explained to them what this was. And the zero was the idea of nothingness, because you can't have something without nothing, right? That's what they called it. They called it the nothingness, the void. And the Arab scholars were like, we've never heard anything like this before. This is incredible. Teach us everything. So they sat there and they taught and they learned. And they said, we've got to take this back to our people. Can we take this back to our people and teach them? They said, yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. So the Arabs went back to their country. And they taught everybody, right? They taught the merchants, the people, the royalty, their educators, their scientists. And it started changing things. It started changing math. It started changing science. It started changing the way that people lived their lives. And they kept working with it. And then they started having more questions. And they started having more questions, and then the, uh, the questions outweighed the answers, and they got stuck. So the Arab scholars went back to India to talk to the Hindu philosophers, and they said, look, this is as far as we could go, and now we have too many questions, and we don't know how to answer them, so maybe we thought you, you guys would be able to help us. And the Hindu philosophers said, yeah, we'll take a look at it. We are going to sleep on it for a little bit, though. And they were like, no, 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 we invented this thing called coffee. <laughs> We're going to need you to pull an all-nighter, so we, we need those answers now. <laughs> and that's what kept happening, back and forth, back and forth. This is what happened. And then other countries got involved. Europe got involved. Southeast Asia got involved. Africa was getting involved, right? And they were all going around these countries, adding a little bit, teaching each other a little bit, taking what doesn't make out, looking at what's different, what they can learn from each other, how they can make this thing different. And then across the ocean, in, on this continent, in the Americas, zero was being used for agricultural purposes by the indigenous people of this country. Mm. Parallel thoughts, two different parts of the world, untouched from each other, was happening at the same time. And we kept doing it over and over and over again. And we got to this point where we looked at the number zero and we said, if that's nothing, can we have less than that? Can we have less than nothing? And then we invented negative numbers. And then we invented banking. <laughs> we made some mistakes with the number all. <laughs> But the idea of negative numbers made zero even stronger. That meant that zero was neither negative nor positive. It was right in the middle. It was right in that center, right? It was balance. That's what we did. That's what zero represents. Zero represents this idea that we took this number and learned a little bit from it, and then we, everybody got to add a little bit something from it. Globally, we went all around the world learning something from this number, learning something from the previous people that had this number, adding a little bit more to it, getting past our differences to try to take a look at what's important and how we can make that shit better. We did that on a global level, and we did that out overlooking all of our identities. We didn't really care about any of that, right? We had Arabs and Hindus working together, men and women working 
working together, black, white, brown people working together, gay people, straight people, it didn't matter. What mattered is how can we take this number to the utmost limit to make it valuable, to make it work and make it progressive for all of us involved. Every single one of us needs to be able to benefit from this number. We did that shit globally before Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> we did that together. We took that number, the idea of nothingness, and we called it balance. So fuck James Madison. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter how big shit gets, we're gonna figure it out. You know? And we can. You can't, you can't get from one side to the other without getting through zero. From getting from negative infinity to positive infinity, you have to go through zero. And this is where we are. We're stuck in negativity. We're, we have a lot of anger and hatred and, and volatility that we have towards each other. You know, we're constantly fighting each other, fight, constantly competing with each other. Who's the best country? Who's got the best healthcare system? Who, none of that shit matters. We all need each other. That's the truth. Every single one of us needs every single one of us. That's the truth. And we need to help each other out in any way that we can. Big or small, giving a sandwich to a homeless man is the same, it, it has the same weight, it changes the same kind of thing as giving an entire country of, of people health care. It's the same weight, and we need to start doing that for each other. And then we can start pulling ourselves out of that negativity and start working our way right back to that center point. If we start helping each other out just a little bit more, we can get back to balance. If we start caring about each other just a little bit, we can get back to zero. You guys have been amazing. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much.